Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about entity linking. And so entities by which we mean people, locations, organizations, etc., um, are at the center of questions that we would oftentimes like to answer with large text databases. And so for example, we might wish to measure which entities receive coverage from media outlets with different slants, um, or maybe want, we want to pull out information about entities such as people, locations, universities, and firms uh, from biographical compendia. And I'm sure you guys can think of a lot of other applications um, where you're working with a large text data set and there's entities in that data set that are of interest to your downstream applications. And so deep learning provides powerful tools for recognizing spans of text that contain entities or classifying which types of entities are referred to um, and for disambiguating entity mentions. And um, so uh, there are two short videos to watch uh, for Thursday's lecture. Um, the first one is on named entity recognition, so being able to recognize and classify uh, spans of text that contain entities. And uh, the second is on entity resolution. Um, so being able to disambiguate entities to a knowledge base like Wikipedia. All right, um, so I'm going to start by talking about named entity recognition or NER. Um, NER is a token level task where the aim is to, to identify spans of text that contain an entity and also to identify the class of the entity. So for example, a person, a location, an organization. And so um, there's a range of NER benchmarks. Um, I think that the most prominent one is Connell, which contains news stories downloaded from Reuters and between 1996 and 1997. Um, and it labels the entities in those stories. Um, and uh, then there's WNUT, which contains information on rare noisy entities in the context of various online discussions, so think like Reddit discussions. Uh, there's ACE 2005, uh, which has texts in Arabic, Chinese, and English uh, from a mixture of different sources, so uh, newswires, broadcast news, weblogs, discussion forums, etc. Um, and there's Onto Notes, um, which is somewhat similar to ACE, um, developed by the same people, but larger and contains a variety of information. Um, so probably the data set that you'll see the most is Connell, uh, but there are these other NER benchmarks. All right, so what's the data format that we use for NER? Um, we typically use what's called the bio format. Um, and so if we have a span of text the beginning of a new entity is marked with a B for begin. Following tokens are marked with an I for enter, and non-entity to tokens are marked with an O. And there are some variations of this, but the bioformatting is the most typical. And so this is an example from, Con uh, from Connell, um, and you can see Harry Potter. Harry is the beginning, Potter is enter, and you see the person because that's the type of entities, and then the O's. Um, are things that are not entities, um, and you see also you can begin a location. All right, um, so NER is actually two subtasks, boundary detection, so we need to identify which tokens make up a named entity and type identification, labeling these tokens with the correct named entity. And you can make mistakes on either one of these, um, and so by far the most common way to evaluate performance on NER is exact match evaluation. So it requires the model to correctly identify boundary and type to be counted as correct. Um, there's also what's called relaxed match evaluation. So a correct type could be credited if an entity is assigned its correct type, uh, regardless of its boundaries, as long as there is an overlap with the ground truth boundaries. Um, and a correct boundary can be credited regardless um, even if the type of assignment is wrong and people have thought about how to aggregate these up, but it's not really very widely used. So what architecture do we use for NER? Um, the great thing is that we can spend one slide on this. Everyone's seen this before. Um, so NER is just a token level task that we do with the transformer. Um, and so we have a pre-trained large language model like Roberta uh, for instance, and um, we do token level classification. 
And so um, you can be the beginning of a person, the beginning of an organization, the beginning of a location, um, an inner token uh, for one of those, um, or an O token, um, which means not an entity. And so architecturally, this is very straightforward. It's kind of what we talked about, um, you know, doing question answering us, predicting a span of text. There we just had the beginning and the end. Um, here we can have kind of multiple spans of text referring to an entity within a context window. Um, and we have uh, one of these uh, classifications on every token. So an O if it's not an entity, and then the B and I along with a type. So the methods uh, behind NER are extremely straightforward, and there's lots of pre-trained models out there that are straightforward to use off the shelf or to fine tune. You can just go to Hugging Face. Um, however, this can actually be a pretty challenging task in practice as there can be a lot of gray zone between different classes of entities and deciding exactly where the entity boundary starts um, and stops. Um, and so we found with labeling this that there were, you know, and this was in the context of historical newspapers, that there were a surprisingly large number of contexts where reasonable people could disagree. Um, and you had to really pin down exactly what you meant um, by different types of entities, uh, by an entity span. Um, and it was really helpful to have congruence labeling. Um, so to have two people um, label the same thing and iron out all the places where there could be a gray zone and where there could be disagreement as otherwise it's uh, pretty easy to have uh, inconsistent labels. This is also something to be aware of if say you're using a model trained on Connell off the shelf and you have your test data set if you've defined an organization in a different way than what Connell has or your boundary between a location and an organization is different than Connell's it might look like you're not doing so great um but really it's just that there's kind of a misalignment between whatever it was trained on and what your definition is and so i think it's just important to be pretty precise um about what you want to get out of it and if you want to use uh something like a model trained on connell off the shelf you need to familiarize yourself with exactly the annotation instructions that connell used and be sure to use those um, when you're labeling your data for evaluation all right, um, so that's named entity recognition, and I'm gonna make a separate video about entity resolution. Um, so please be sure to watch that video before class as well.